in part one of this curator basics video we show how an offense works and the rules and the test conditions and uh, but then we left a lot of questions unanswered or how does curator extract all those custom properties and how does it knows how is it, does it figure that out and that's uh, lead us to understanding how the dsm editor works and so what we're going to be doing in this video is that we're going to take a log source that has already been created and we will try to understand how the dsm editor actually works and in part three we're going to build a very basic one from scratch okay so let's actually go into the very same offense that we use for part one uh, remember that uh, we showed what is it that the rule that made that happen actually uh, trigger and we look at the events and let's actually open them up again and I'm going to show you how we will analyze how the DSM editor works and this is actually useful in case that let's say that you, you have a DSM editor that exists today and is modified by the vendor new custom properties new parts of the law comes out and we want to extract it but IBM hasn't updated the parser so you want to actually do it yourself you don't want to wait for IBM to do that even though I I heard that they are pretty speedy on it but if you cannot wait and you want to do it uh, this this video will help you understand the basics of how to do that so uh, this was the event that we look at and if I were to on the, try to understand this let me open the payload and here's the entire event it's a rather big one so I'm gonna put this into the clipboard and I'm gonna go actually and there are multiple ways where you can call the DSM editor but I'm gonna call it here from the admin tab go on to DSM editor and the first thing that you need to specify for the DSM editor is what is the log source type not the instance but the type the generic type and we saw before that this is a AWS cloud trail one so I select uh, that one and what you have in here in this pane is it gives you the opportunity when you click on this uh, pencil button to paste the content of a log and say that you get this in the log activity tab or from whatever you have right and then when you click here check you get that the event is actually parse and map and in part three we will will see how you gradually go into into that process but as you can see uh, if we scroll here to the right there are very many conditions that are being uh, extracted from the actual logs so, so we see all those those are called custom properties and where you get those from this tab now you see that there are very many that curator figure out by the logic itself like the destination IP you don't need to do anything the, the, the system find that's out uh, those out and same thing with destination port port uh, and and some of these are custom right where does that come from and notice that when I select that one boom is telling me that these are regex and by the way not everything has to be done on regex and most more the things you can do with uh, everything that is JSON XML etc uh, you don't you don't have to deal with regex if you want a shortcut for regex I have a separate video I will put it into this series that shows uh, my cheat sheet for uh, regex right but here we have that when we open that we notice two things first there are two expressions you see expressions two and you can have more than two what this means is there might be more than one way in which this account ID comes in the logs and you need to catch them with the with the different uh, test conditions so you see that in this particular case when I click in this one this is not the one that worked in this case this is the one that did and you can have you know multiple test conditions uh, on the regex or, or JSON or XML or name value pairs or you know there are multiple types on the logs right now and this I didn't have to do anything because this was created by uh, in this particular case was by IBM when I added from the app exchange the AWS let me actually 
go there and show you that. Uh, let me open here a page. Let's go into the X Force. Let's go into the App Exchange. When we look in here into the package AWS, search here only the curator ones. Look at that, 251. So if we put here AWS and search for those, we find this is the package that actually gave those custom properties. And if we see the details of it, custom properties 30 as QIDs, as custom rules, uh, launchable. Where we are concerned right now is custom property. And notice that it also has a log source type. And that's where the my DSM actually came. By means adding that package, boom, I got that DSM already created for me. I didn't have to do it. But again, this video is about how to show you how things works behind the scenes, right? So let me go back to the DSM editor. And, and, and so as you see here, there are very many properties in here. Let me see if this one exists in the... Uh, not that, yeah, that's actually there. And again, this one has two expressions because there might be variations. Uh, you know, we can go here and see where that one is in here. That is not, and they don't have to be on well, actually, it's the second time this one that, that catch that one. It's actually pretty good. By the way, the capture group is of some regular expressions. Uh, and a capture group is basically what is found within the parentheses of the regular expression. Some regular expressions, you need to find a first part to get the second one. And what you're interested in is on the second one. So therefore, you will have in the regular expression two set of parentheses. Well, if what you want is on the second one, then your capture group will be number two. Again, giving you some, some basis. So this, this is a way in which you actually get the properties for your uh, actual log source. So this is actually a good example on which, well, actually this, let me see if it's found in here. Uh, this actually found there. But that you, again, not every log needs to have all the properties that, that you want. That's the point I'm trying to, to actually make, right? Uh, what else? And actually, this is one example. This one doesn't have property configuration, right? But that's fine. I mean, when if it if it would have had, then that we will we will see it in here, and it would have been parsed in the corresponding column down here. You, by the way, you can click in here and decide which columns you want and you don't want, and all that good stuff. More on the more details on the DSM later. But once you have extracted all your custom properties. And in this case, again, none of this you have to do, but I'm explaining how that works. So the, the creators of this package put all this stuff for you, boom, and that stuff is working. The next thing that you need to do is to produce mappings. So every one of these things is an event, is, is a type of event. So therefore gets assigned an event ID. So how you do the mapping is you need to have the combination of two custom properties. On these properties, notice that we have an event ID. Let me actually look in here. Event ID, where are you? Here you are, right? This thing scrolls down here. This is the event ID. I don't like that when I click here on the top, then scrolls all the way to the top. But this is the event ID. That's one of the things that you need to have for every event that you are parsing, right? So, and here's the event ID. And notice that in here, I don't even see the details. You can actually override what the creators of this thing did. And you can put your own regular expression, the capture group and, and all that. But probably you, you, you may not want to actually do that, right? Now check that. No? So, so the the system already knows how to get the event ID. I didn't have to do it. If you were creating one on your own, you need to specify how you're going to capture that. So, and the other thing that you need to do the mapping to really identify this event as a unique thing is actually the condition right here, the event category. Again, this thing scrolls all the way to the top. We 
can actually see those better here and notice that the from this log the system extracted and I you don't need to see their regular expression because it was created by the the guys who created the DSM editor uh, you get here the event ID which is run instances and event category and that creates a, that unique combination in general the event category for all the events will be the same and is typically given to the name of the log source type doesn't have to be but that's generally the case but the combination of these two things gives you a specific mapping right and that's what you actually define in here and as you can see there are very many mappings and you know 262 of them I'm going to actually find the one that we are actually uh, working with and to locate that I'm going to put here in this filter run instances hit enter and there are many but the one that that we have in here is the one here on the top this is a unique combination of those two once you have an event already identified then what is but what will happen is that a QID, a curator identifier record is created and inside that record there is information that will not be as part of the actual log itself is the name as we've seen it in here there are these two things a high level category and the low level category and you can have rules that fire let's say and the when the category is this and that so and this is where it gets that the severity which is used in the magnitude uh, computation of the rule here is the place where you actually put that there and any other description that will show up when 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 uh, this event property is actually uh, discovered right so that that combination of a unique event ID and event category creates a QID record and you will be creating one and we will do that when, when when we get on the part three of this video for one manually but I just wanted to show you that uh, that combination of those two so in what we have done especially in this second part is show you that the DSM editor extracts the different fields you define the custom properties as you saw there you define the category of the actual event by, by, by doing that mapping and when you get the mapping done you create a new QID definition that has that record that has all these uh, details in there now another thing that I want to talk about to before I we do our own uh, we create our own DSM editor is uh, talk about the property auto detection uh, don't confuse property auto detection with log source auto detection log source auto detection when enabled this is the thing that allows traffic analysis to pick into something that it is new to it and say oh I know what this is this is an AWS cloud trail boom assigns the parser and there we go and, and it, so so let's say that you got a new log source of AWS cloud trail gets to curator curator that com it comes from a place that he doesn't know about it picks into it when it gets 25 of those and actually that parameter is here if we show advanced option we can see yeah if it gets 25 uh, events uh, uh, in a, in a uh, certain period of time it says yeah I, I, I let me pick in it it recognizes give it a parcel and go so that's one thing but what I want to talk about it is property auto detection configuration if you turn that on then what this does is it automatically assigns and you know the the detection of everything that it sees in here and when the format is JSON, CF, leaf, uh, name value pair and XML it knows how easily say okay this thing that's the name boom and that's the value in here I'm gonna create a property for that boom 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 and does that so you don't have to be do the laborious things of doing those things automatically but that's gonna generate a bunch of custom properties and you don't wanna necessarily have custom property for everything you do speaking of which where do you see all the custom properties if you go into the admin tab of data sources of custom event properties here they are right and you can search by every one of them and you can have an enable disable or, and this is you know everything that my curator sees as you can see there are very many 
custom property from all the log sources uh, that I have defined in my system. One final thing is that for a custom property to be applicable in a rule, in able to be able to fire rule, one thing that you need to do is have it index, right? And, and this is a place in which you can actually see and you can sort these by by popularity, uh, so percentage of searches. If I put this, I say, well, the, the majority of the most popular one, uh, this actually has our index, which means that uh, they are good for rules and the search of it is actually very fast because those things have been indexed there. And if I were to go into a, into a allow me to go into a, into a particular log, let me actually, this is actually of, of the same type. Let me click into anyone, and by the way, you can actually click, right click on that event, go into DSM editor and boom, you will be automatically have the payload and all, and all the stuff up put there. But if you were looking at a particular event like this one, and let's say that you want to extract the property that the system is not extracting, unusual, but it may happen, then you actually go here, right? And notice that when you define the new property that you want, you have that option to say enable indexing, and you need to. It says enable for using rules, and forward profiles, and search indexing, right? So that's in order to make this conversation completed, I try to cover all those things. Now, in part three, we're going to create our very own first uh, uh, DSM editor or parser from scratch. So I'm going to have some log sources, and then we'll also use it to show you some capabilities that the DSM editor has, particularly in, uh, after version 1.41.